Okay, welcome back to Economics. This is Dr. Kling, and today we're going to talk about the foreign exchange market. And this is something that I think is really quite confusing. Um, so the foreign... E <coughs> we have something called an exchange rate, which let's just say it's the yen per dollar. Okay, <coughs> so if we can get more yen per the dollar, so when this is going up, the dollar is getting stronger. Right, we can get more yen per dollar. If we can get more yen per dollar, is that going to be good or bad for the trade balance? So first of all, are we going to export more? Or let's say, are we going to import more? And if the, if the dollar is getting stronger and yen are getting cheaper, then we're going to import more because Japanese goods will be cheaper. And by the same token, we'll export less because American goods will be more expensive. So the dollar getting stronger is not good for the trade balance. And so if we go back to that, the saving story, so if the dollar goes up, we know that X minus M will go down. We'll export less and import more. So S, that means that S minus I is going down. We're, we shift expenditures <coughs> toward toward foreign goods and on net, I better say this, on net we save less in the um, in this uh, in this story. Assuming we have T minus G constant, if X minus M goes down then S minus I has to go down. Uh, so in some sense on net we're saving less in this story. Okay, so the important thing to remember is dollar getting stronger means that we import more and export less. And <coughs> why would the dollar get stronger? We tell a story in the foreign exchange market where we have, I hope I'm doing this right, yen per dollar. And we have demand and supply. I'm going to take a second and make sure I'm doing that right. Yes, I think I am as long as I put dollars on the axis. So what's in the denominator in the vertical axis is uh, what we put on the horizontal axis. So the if the quantity, if, <coughs> so we will, we're willing to supply more dollars as the yen to dollar rate goes up and the demand for dollars goes down as the yen per dollar rate goes up. Let's see if I can explain that one. Okay, so as we go in this direction, that is over here going in this direction, the yen to dollar rate goes up then the dollar is getting stronger. As the dollar gets stronger, <coughs> uh, people want to buy fewer American goods because they can't afford them, and so the demand for dollars goes down. 
so the demand goes down. So that's why um, we have a downward sloping demand curve. Um, and Americans at the same time will want to buy more Japanese goods, which means that they're trying to put dollars into the market to buy yen in order to get Japanese goods so the supply goes up. So Americans want, so as the dollar gets stronger, other things equal, if dollar stronger means <coughs> we want more Japanese goods because they're cheaper, Japanese goods because they're cheaper, and so our supply of dollars to exchange for yen will go up. Okay, so there's <coughs> there's a balance point, an equilibrium point for the value of the dollar here and for the supply and demand for dollars here. So that's the, the idea of there being a foreign exchange market, is that there's some natu natural level at which the value of the dollar and the yen will settle. And the things that affect that market, you know, we've talked about uh, <coughs> supply and demand for goods, but the things that affect it the most are relative interest rates. In particular, if the the U.S. interest rate goes up, Japanese will want to buy bonds in the U.S. sending the demand for dollars up. So if we have yen per dollar, dollars, demand, supply, if the U.S. interest rate goes up and the Japanese stays the same, then we get this increase in demand for dollars and the dollar is strengthened. So the important point <coughs> is that this is a mechanism by which um, interest rate goes up, gives us stronger dollar, and that in turn, not shown on this graph, will be a weaker trade balance. That is, exports down, imports up. So that's the um, um, so that's the story of how <coughs> change in interest rates affects the value of the dollar, and therefore affects the trade balance. And implicitly, here we've been assuming that the exchange rate is allowed to float. But some countries, so we've been describing an, a system of floating exchange rate. An alternative is what's called a fixed exchange rate. And in that case, <coughs> um, the in some sense, the monetary policy has to focus on the exchange rate. So when, if something happens to increase, so let's say, let's say that we were fixing our exchange rate relative to the yen, and something happened that uh, threatened to cause, so something
causes the dollar to get stronger, the amount of yen per dollar to go up, <coughs> then our monetary policy we have to expand, money has to expand, we have to, ex to expand the money supply to lower our interest rate to bring the yen per dollar down, back down to our target. So if we're going to manage the exchange rate, if our currency is threatening to appreciate, to get stronger, we have to loosen our money supply. So in a fixed exchange rate regime, when you have an incipient appreciation, that is something that's causing your currency to appreciate, you have to loosen your money supply or run an expansion. <coughs> loosen money, lower interest rates. And when you have <coughs> an incipient depreciation, you have to tighten money supply, and you might not want to do that, it, depending on what's, what else is going on in the economy, and you raise the interest rate. So that's in a fixed exchange rate regime. So one of the advantages of a floating exchange rate regime is that you can pursue your monetary policy with more freedom without worrying so much about the exchange rate. And we'll talk about that more next time.